everyone. It is Tanya Hertz here. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about business communications. Um, it's such an important concept in all uh, facets of business and uh, it's one of those it's one of those topics that should be included in every single business class because it is so important uh, in business. Uh, it's uh, we have a section on it in this class, luckily, and uh, we're just going to touch on the basics of business communication, some of the barriers to effective communication, and some of the ways that we can uh, overcome some of those barriers and uh, make the most of our of our communication styles. So. We're talking about business communication. We're talking about the transmission of, inf in, of information between the sender and the recipient. So one person is speaking, the other person is listening. Um, one person is writing, the other person is reading. Uh, business communication is that same process, um, but it is either uh, between employees um, or, um, well, between employees um, or employees and, um, uh, and uh, customers, um, it can be lateral, it can be vertical, it can be uh, communication can be um, from the top down, from the bottom up or, or lateral, uh, within and outside the company. And communication always includes listening. Um, communication also uh, includes um, uh, seeking to understand, trying to understand, looking for feedback uh, from the audience. Um, and then responding appropriately and feedback can be uh, verbal or nonverbal. Um, it can be things like nodding. It can be things like looking alert, looking interested. It can be uh, in a Zoom call. It can be something like having your camera turned on, right? That, that's feedback. And um, one thing I do want to say also, uh, when we're talking about communication, very often we think about um, communication styles like, um, you know, things like, a face-to-face -face interview or a phone call or an email but uh, in today's world these virtual meetings are becoming a reality and there are rules uh, to communicating in a business setting um, th that are different than communicating um, with your friends and your Having your camera on in a business meeting is not only um, appropriate, it's expected. It's expected that you have your camera on. And um, most, um, most companies won't require that you have your, your uh, camera on at every meeting, but if you're the person who doesn't have their camera on in the meeting, it looks bad. It really does. Um, you lose so much when you don't have that, uh, uh, you know, that it's that face to face. It's not face to face, but it's the closest we can get to face to face communication, right? Okay. So moving forward. Um, so business communication vital. It is so important. It is essential for success and for growth in every organization. And um, unlike the communication that we have with our family, with our friends, there's a, a goal this is a goal oriented uh, communication when we're using business communication and if we want an enterprise to be successful the the rules of the company the core company values the regulations the policies um, they have to be communicated to people within and, and outside of the organization and that's a large part of what we do in business communication um, yeah. so what are some barriers that we often see uh, to communication well a barrier um, or obstacle um, is uh, is called a barrier. Uh, a barrier could be something like noise. Um, noise is uh, comes in many different forms, and whenever we say um, noise in a, we're talking about something that's causing um, a disruption between the message sender and the message receiver, right? We've all played that game in school telephone, right? Where where one person whispers a message. And then uh, you go down the line, each person whispering the message. And by the time you get to that last, uh, that last person, the message is totally skewed, right? There's, um, that's by and large because of, of some kind of noise. And there's a many different kinds of noise. And we'll look at the um, types of noise that there are. There's physical noise. So physical noise or a physical barrier could be something like, um, um, well, it could be something like the, uh, well, the, that, that, um, 
air conditioner, making uh, making actual noise, right? Um, that that gets in the way. It could be that the cl that the classroom or that the business meeting is too cold. It could be um, anything that that physically gets in the way of that communication. There could be language barriers, right? Not understanding the uh, terminology, not understanding the the language. Uh, perhaps uh, English is not the speaker or the listener's first language. There can be um, issues in body language um, that can that can be an obstacle to communication. So I don't know if any of you have ever um, spoken to somebody who's just obviously not listening to you, right? Sitting back like this, kind of looking in other ways, not, not listening to what you're saying. Now, sitting back isn't always a, a sign of not listening. Uh, for men versus women, typically they listen a little differently um, in terms of their body language, but um, by and large, sitting forward is indicative of of listening, um, eye contact, things like this. Um, and then, right, uh, uh, tone of voice um, also uh, would uh, be an, another barrier or, uh, you know, standing too close to somebody uh, while, while you're speaking can all affect communication. So perceptual can just be, uh, it just essentially means what we perceive, what we, um, what we think, whether or not that's true. Um, so um, maybe we can go we go into a meeting thinking that this person doesn't know what he or she is talking about we have a preconceived notion there's a perceptual barrier uh, to effective communication organizationally there could be uh, internal uh, organizational constraints to um, communication perhaps you can't speak to who you need to speak to because there's a chain of command and um, which disrupts that uh, natural flow of organization or, i'm sorry of communication and then culturally Right, um, the way that we speak, um, and when we're talking cultural, we're talking uh, uh, it could be the culture of um, a people, a group of people, or it could be uh, the culture of an organization. Um, perhaps uh, part of the culture of an organization is that we don't we don't um, speak up when there's a problem. Uh, maybe there is a, a, a lot of hierarchy in an organization, and so you don't feel comfortable speaking with your uh, superior, right? So um, nonverbal communication and active listening. Uh, so any, any nonverbal communication is communication that does not use words, that does not include words. So um, th those are all of uh, the body language. These are all of the um, eye contact, other, other uh, anything that doesn't include uh, our words. So it could be our facial expressions, right? Tone of voice, et cetera, et cetera. Now, nonverbal communication does reinforce the meaning of the message. It is more important, perhaps, than the words. Not perhaps, definitely. When we look at the research and we, we look at how much meaning is conveyed based on nonverbal communication versus verbal communication, um, more than 90% of a message is uh, interpreted based on nonverbal communication. So think about this. Think about if somebody says, um, yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I don't really get to even talk like that. But um, when somebody says uh, that, d do you really think that I thank you a lot? Right? The tone of my voice conveys that I'm not thankful. Now, if you combine that thanks a lot with, um, here, let me turn my video back on. Sorry, my, the um, connection, there's another barrier. Um, technology, right? The connection isn't great. So so sometimes I sh shut off the camera to make it work better. But anyways, so let's do that. Thanks a lot. Uh, if I'm also have a really mean look on my face when I say it, thanks a lot. Right? right? That's not very thankful. You can tell um, non-verbally that I'm not thanking you for anything, right? I don't even like talking like that. Active listening is an important skill to develop. And uh, it is a skill. It's something that we need to work on. And and we can improve upon it. Active listening does not simply mean um, making a comment every time somebody says something, but that it can be part of it. Um, active listening is um, many things. It can be many things. It can be nodding. It can be um, making a comment. It can be uh, reiterating what that person uh, says or saying it again in your own words. Um, but, but really, it's anytime a listener focus, focuses the complete attention on the speaker. Active listening is when you're listening to understand 
not to wait to speak yourself. Uh, many people are in a conversation just waiting for their turn to speak. And that's not the kind of person that um, is going to understand that's not, you're not going to learn if you're just waiting for your turn to talk. So um, yeah. So uh, some tips for, for listening better. Use, use that extra brain power that you have to um, digest what the person is saying and then put it in your own words, right? Anytime somebody's talking to you, think about what they're saying and then say, you know, okay, first of all, why does this matter? And then how do I, how would I say this in my own words? What are the key points? What are the takeaways? Every time I get out of any conversation, any meeting, anything that I, I do, I always, always, always have my notebook with me and I write down a couple of uh, key takeaways, right? Um, and and uh, very often I'll also put them in my own words. I don't even care if I'm recording this entire meeting. I still will always write down um, a couple of key takeaways and those kind of, um, reinforcements in my own words are, are more powerful for me than um, than any other any other um, type of um, of reinforcement and, and that's how I learn personally um, and good listening means good learning uh, don't ever glance at your emails or your text while somebody is um, talking it is beyond rude and um, you know those little sur surreptitious looks or glances at your at your cell phone, we can see you, right? You're not fooling anyone. Um, just put the phone away. In, in fact, it, it, what's really, I found that it was um, really, really effective in my meetings with my staff when I would take my phone and not just, uh, you know, not just uh, turn it off and leave it or turn off the ringer and leave it sitting on the, um, on the table, but when I would actually turn it completely off and put the phone away, it feels um, to the people that you're with that it's really respectful, right? Uh, don't don't start talking the second that the other person stops talking, right? Allow a beat, take a beat, right? I understand. I'm listening. Then talk, right? It's a uh, it's polite and it, it helps you to understand the message. Listen with your ears and your eyes. Um, always pay attention to body language. Use, um, use your own body language to indicate that you care, that you're attentive, that you are um, listening to them. Nod, smile, lean forward, right? It's, it, it's polite, it's empathetic, it's, um, it helps you to learn. Uh, and also, if you're in a group presentation, make sure that you um, are listening to the speaker who is in your group, right? Don't, don't just um, kind of zone out while that person is speaking and just wait for your turn. It's a, a good way to, to look cohesive in a team presentation is to nod and listen while that person is speaking. Um, what I was gonna say about this also, something else I wanted to put about that nonverbal communication. Um, well, uh, maybe it'll come to me. Uh, also use verbal communication to show that you are listening, right? So what you're saying is blank. So uh, let me make sure that I understand you. That is a, it's such a respectful thing to do when you're communicating with somebody else. Uh, just just to, to show that you care what they're saying. Um, and um, gosh, it's been really effective when I've done that and um, asked my employees to do that, uh, very often I'll find that they didn't understand what I was saying when I asked them to reiterate in their own words or when I put it in my own words. So um, yeah, don't get too comfortable in a meeting, especially um, keep your phone completely put away. You'll be tempted to look at it uh, when it's um, not there, or I'm sorry, when it's there, but if it's put away, you'll be less um, likely to look at it. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Also um, in, a, in a virtual meeting, in a virtual meeting, you should always have your camera on. I've told you this before in a business setting. But then also, um, if if you're speaking to somebody, anytime you're speaking, you should stop moving around uh, and and give your entire attention to that um, that process of speaking. And also, when you're listening, you don't want to have um, you know this is like this, right? You don't want to be. Uh, oh, so what I'm talking to you about is this and. Um, and this is my yada, 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 right? It's hard to pay attention when somebody's doing that. It's extremely hard to pay attention. And uh, 
it's beyond that. It's a little bit rude when they're talking for you to do that. Uh, also, you'll want to make sure in um, in a uh, virtual meeting, in a virtual uh, commun communication setting, that you uh, have adequate lighting, that you have a, a background that's professional. It's a little messy back there, but you, you definitely don't want to be doing this. I actually saw somebody presenting, giving an elevator pitch, and they were in their bedroom with their bathroom door open with dirty laundry hanging over the, the um, edge of the, uh, the door, and they're asking for, for money for seed funds. Do you think an angel investor really wants to invest in someone who can't be bothered to, to, to make a decent looking professional background? Um, yeah, make sure the lighting is good. Make sure that the lighting is behind your laptop or your um, cell phone. Better to do your meetings on um, laptops rather than cell phones. And then also, uh, it's a good idea to, to walk around the house and see where the lighting is best and then um, where the background looks good. Obviously, you don't want to be doing this while you're in the meeting, but try to find a background that looks professional, that looks good, and where you actually don't have any shadows on your face. And this is a, a, very often where I'll do some of my meetings. Yes, and um, yeah, and where the light is, is coming uh, directly at you. You want to avoid a lot of shadows on your, on your face. Um, you always want the camera to, to be, camera I say, but your laptop to be set down. Uh, you don't want to be holding it during the um, meeting. And you also want it to be a little bit above your face looking down at you rather than below looking up, okay? And I think you can see why, okay. Don't ever interrupt others or cut them off. Uh, it's, it's, it's rude and um, gosh, I know some people just talk so slow and it drives me up the wall, but slow down, let them finish. And yeah, you shouldn't talk as fast as I do. Do what I, do what I say, not what I do, all right. So different kinds of uh, communication channels include things like um, email, uh, face, uh, face to face, um, Zoom, so many other communication channels and really no uh, text messages, uh, phone calls, there's so many and knowing which channel is appropriate um, is important and different channels are appropriate for different things and different um, generational cohorts prefer different um, channels. Um, different messages are appropriate for different channels. Uh, if you're going to be, let's say, for example, giving someone uh, the boot, you're going to fire somebody, right? You're going to let them go in the organization. Uh, do you think it would be appropriate to send that message in a text message? Well, I don't know, maybe if they're a millennial or a Gen Zer, but uh, probably not if they are uh, um, any other generation, right? So texting, memos, emails, voicemail, telephone, like I said, uh, video conferencing, there's, there's Zoom, there's um, Skype, there's all, all of our different types of um, virtual uh, presentations or virtual meetings. Um, now, oops, let me go back. Um, now, which of these is the best communication channel? Well, the most rich channel is usually the most effective. And so you really want to make sure to choose the, the channel, the one, the, mess, the medium, the channel with the most channel richness, we call it. And that means where there's the, uh, the most context, right? So you can see the most, you can hear the most, you can uh, experience the most. So that would be face to face, right? Because you can smell, touch, see everything. Uh, which which um, medium has the least? Uh, well, let's see, maybe something written and um, probably maybe an email, maybe a, a, a text. Um, probably even a text would be less than email, right? Because it has to be so short. Um, oh, one thing about texting, don't text when um, the message is not a clear, concise message and the message is not something that can be said in a sentence or, or so. Uh, never text several sentences. Um, that would, uh, if it's several sentences, that's indicative of it needing to be an email. There's synchronous communication and asynchronous. Synchronous means that it's happening at the same time. I talk, you listen, you talk back. Asynchronous means I talk and then 
uh, wait around until you hear the message and then you respond. So uh, texting would be asynchronous, uh, memos, reports asynchronous, email asynchronous, voicemail asynchronous, telephone synchronous, right? Video synchronous, the rest are synchronous. So uh, what do you need to do when you're deciding which communication channel? Well, you need to analyze your audience, understand what their, um, what their needs are, what their background is, what they expect, their education level. Uh, typically people who have a higher level of, of um, power in an organization are less likely to like the more informal channels like texting, right? Always be concise. This is business. This is not art uh, or, or, or dance or music or something like this. You know, get to the point, say it clearly, quick, quick, and I can't speak, clearly, quickly, concisely, and, um, and always start with that key topic sentence and then support it with um, evidence and, and um, with uh, outside support. Um, more than just anecdotal or, or story support, but, but real data is a, a great way to, uh, to um, get your meaning across uh, as, as best as possible. Avoid slang, avoid, avoid personal bias, avoid jargon, avoid um, any, a, a, any biases that you, um, or preconceived notions that you come in with. And that includes things like gender bias. Avoid gender bias in, in your um, words as well. You don't want to say like, I heard somebody just the other day talking about the manpower needed in, in the organization. Now, um, sure that has a meaning, uh, meaning, um, the amount of work it will physical work it's going to take to get a job done but um, there are better terms that are not uh, that are more gender neutral and less um, offensive to some um, people uh, avoid age biases uh, avoid thinking oh this person's not going to be able to use technology because they're older or this person is um, is disinterested and maybe uh, not as smart because they're younger and don't have experience, right? Avoid those kind of biases, and, and all biases, race, race, ethnicity, and nationality. Use the active voice rather than the passive voice. Um, by that we mean um, you start with uh, you start with uh, the the. Um, I'll give you an example here. So the active voice would be something like, um, I'm having trouble speaking right now. My communication skills are going out the window because I wanted this to be a short video for you. But uh, so the active voice would be something like, uh, Tanya made this video. Uh, so you start with uh, me, the person um, who's doing the action, and then the, um, the, what I'm doing the action on. So Tanya made the video, makes perfect sense. What you don't want to say is uh, the video was made by Tanya. Does that make sense? Or uh, you might say uh, the students learned effective communication. That's the active voice. Not effective communication was learned by the students, right? It's, it's, it's confusing, it's, uh, it's jumbled, and it is not business, right? Business, clear, concise, active. So always start with the Subject, so Tanya, me, uh, and then perform the, whatever it is, um, action um, expressed by the verb. So yeah. it's effective for business communication. And then uh, again, passive voice is the, um, is the opposite. Not very effective. Okay, so here is an example of um, a direct the type of communication. Um, we also call this the deductive approach uh, to business uh, communication. Always use the deductive approach. So you start with the primary message and then you support it, right? So topic sentence, whatever you're trying to say, get it out of your mouth right now. Don't beat around the bush. Don't tell a long narrative before you get back to it, right? So um, primary message, support. Then key point number one, support. Key point number two, support. Right? And always end with a call to action. So this is what I want you to do at the end. Right? Now, a deductive approach is great for, for stories and for, uh, you know, like interesting narratives, but not for business, right? Where you're starting 
with the uh, all of the points and then you're building this, um, you know, finding all these points together and bringing them together. And then at the end, you come to this grand conclusion that is not appropriate in, in business. Um, I will say, though, uh, one thing that is really important in all business communication, keep your keep your sentences um, clear, concise, but keep your paragraphs clear and concise. Um, paragraphs should be three to five sentences. Now, this is not just in the deductive uh, approach. This is in all um, business communication. Uh, three to five sentences, 40 to 100 words is the standard, right? 40 to 100 words per paragraph. Don't go over 100 words in a paragraph. Do not go over 100 words in a paragraph, right? 80, I would almost say 80 is, is, is about the max that you want to see. We want every new topic, every new... Um, idea goes in its own paragraph. And um, you want to keep your tone both professional but conversational. You want to always avoid grammar errors. Use block paragraphs. That means you left justify. You don't indent at the beginning of a paragraph. You know, this isn't your eighth grade English class. Everything goes over on the left, just like an email. Use headings as much as possible. Use bullets. Um, appropriately. So bullets are a good way to kind of get the information out quickly. Bullets are not sentences, therefore they do not have periods on them. In business, we love headings. And so put as many as you can to help the reader find the information as quickly as possible. And the process for, for creating business messages is you plan, you write, and then you review. So plan, write, review. Now, how much time do you spend in each of these planning, writing, and reviewing? Well, a good writer spends a lot more time planning and a lot more time reviewing and not a lot of time writing. A bad writer, a bad writer uh, does the opposite. So good writers, expert writers, they're more likely to analyze the audience. So plan and um, really think about what they want to say before they actually start the draft, right? So bad writers, a little tiny bit of time planning and a lot of time writing or a, 